the Leo and Danny show. I, given all that, absolutely some blind spots for me, some misunderstandings, some things I shouldn't have done. I still think I was acting from a righteous place with the information I had. I was trying to do what was right for my little ecosystem out here. For my small YouTube squad, I wanted harmony. I wanted everybody to get along. Him being in this crew didn't feel right. And I do think I made some errors, but... I think my initial instinct that he wouldn't be a good fit and that there was something a little bit off about him was validated when he delayed a bunch of flights to meet me in Austin, Texas. Okay, he claims he only deleted one. Delayed one flight. Sorry. So, okay. I heard from somebody he delayed like I said, a bunch. YouTubers, they care about the details. Sure. Austin, thank he you. He delayed also. a flight and the the number of or the tally of flight delays seems a little silly when it well, up with the mayonnaise and the kicks know, right yeah. it is relevant if he mm. if he had delayed eight flights had been waiting there and funny. hiding for eight, months eight flights, eight flights would have been classic that's psychotic yeah. <laughs> but if he is about to leave he hears you're going to be showing out in a few days and he can make one change mm -hmm. to uh, have some sort of ending to this mm -hmm. sort of quiet behind the scenes issue he's been having for a long time it's, it doesn't come off to me as that unreasonable. And I thought Brandon was pretty cool at this point. I mean, mm. Ian even hit me up. Hey, bro, where do you think I can get a stripper in Austin? And I was like, well, you could ask Nerdballer. And he's like, well, we can't. It has to be anyone except for Nerdballer. And I was like, well, Brandon's got a bunch of friends over there. Maybe contact Brandon. But Brandon said, actually, it was Nerdballer that told him you were going to be in Austin. And then he delayed mm. his flight for one day. Mm. I mean, he delayed it one time. I don't know how long mm -hmm. he delayed okay. it for. So, yeah, I, I made some mistakes but I feel like my initial instincts proved correct when he delayed that flight, when he showed up, squirted me in the face with a bottle of mayonnaise, threw it against my wheelchair. I was handicapped for fuck's I mean, sakes. Very uncalled for. Hero. And then chest puffed out, tried to fight me and unequivocally kicked Nico very hard in the nuts. Any claim that we doctored that footage, which I guess has been going around, is despicable. Ian edited it. Yeah. So, yeah. So unless you decided after the fact to try to sneak in there and do something which i know you did not it's it's unedited we admittedly chose the best angles to show the kick nico's angle didn't show very well because he yeah. was close right in his face we had another camera there that was kind of behind them we picked the angle that showed it the best whereas brandon's angle that he shows in the video barely shows the kick at all it shows nico's shoves really clearly mm -hmm. which yeah he was shoving him but nico's shoves were not like hey i'm about to beat your ass kind of shoves because you know nico's half his size mm -hmm. and honestly just, nico did what if we had king croc there being bodyguard he would have done the same thing i think anybody would because if yeah. his goal was to fight danny and he's mm -hmm. first gonna blind him with mayonnaise mm -hmm. that's bullshit that's not a fair fight yeah, yeah. In, in this public fucking rocky street yeah. you're gonna you're gonna blind him and then fight if you really are that confident you can just fight him in a fair fight then show maybe up and, and i will admit you can tell nico's a little drunk too well Oh, yeah, he had a few uh, tequila shots, if I don't uh, yeah. if I remember Brandon correctly. Brandon claims that Nico had shark eyes, which... That's is, not true. Which may or may not be true. I yeah. don't know. I uh, there, it's probably true. It's I would, Nico, I would, I would be Nico. willing to make that leap. It's, it's, it's nighttime it in Texas, Neeks. and it's Nico. He might have been creeping around to being Neeks right around there. Yeah, <laughs> so that... And then can you pull up the picture, Austin? I, as far as I could tell, Brandon was... Very pleased with the reaction he got from his video. And why shouldn't he be? Talking about the one of your girlfriend? Yes. Okay. It performed very well. Sure. A, a, a lot of people were very pissed off. A lot of them were troll accounts. But there were genuine fans of ours that were very upset mm -hmm. with yeah. what he revealed on his video. So hats off to him. He made an impact. But I still, that behavior, I don't think it could ever be be justified or I could ever condone that and say that was okay yeah. and apologize for the entire incident. I mean, to put this in perspective, imagine if after I shot with Nelk, Kyle had texted me fucking anything. You're a talentless little fuck. Never contact Nelk again. We don't want to see you or be associated with you. Even if they text me that, for me to drive down to Newport Beach where they live now, squirt Kyle in the face with mayonnaise, yeah. Kick Osgod in the nutsack Jeez, and then start DMing Selena, Steve's girlfriend, mm -hmm. and, and fucking captioning it and throwing it on my story. Everybody would think I was the world's biggest crazy person. Yeah. That would never be okay for me to do. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. Well, so, yeah. the, the, the part that, that's not 
the analogy isn't perfect because in that scenario, they would have to not be directly telling you anything, but be seeming to be behind the scenes trying to ruin contacts with everyone you you come in contact with. Do you think it would have gone over well, even if that were the case, though? Like, I just cannot imagine, hats off to Brandon, to getting off unscathed after mayonnaising me, kicking Nico, posting about my girlfriend. I just don't think I could have pulled that off. I think people, I think even if Steve Will Do It had raped my mom, I think people would still think I was a psycho if I did that. I I don't don't agree with his final choice of what he did, but I think that it was... It was building up a lot of things over yep. time. It got there. He tried a few times to speak to sure. you. And That's what I've said, too. Like, the mayonnaise thing, it's like, haha, whatever, mayonnaise. But I think trying to instigate a fight after that is yeah. where he took it, like, way too far. And, and let me say this. Lastly, I'm going to say my piece, and then I'm going to be done. Sure. I, dude, I cannot get mad about the shock tactics, about the posting the girlfriend picture. The fucking sunfish was my thing. I fucking get it, dude. I, I The mayonnaise thing, it's kind of funny. Like, he's fucking taking pictures in Rayleigh's with two jars of mayonnaise. It's kind of funny. <laughs> Good and injury. also, I thought it was funny when Conor McGregor was getting punked by Jake Paul. Jake Paul was talking shit about Conor's girlfriend. So I can't really get all butt hurt when he's doing this with my girlfriend. He's making it public. It wasn't like he was actually trying to fuck her. It was a stunt. And Ian, you did bring up the point that... With this stand-up show thing, especially, it really did seem like I was dispatching goons to talk shit, to banish Brandon wherever he went, which was not the case. And so I just want to say to Brandon that this was a big misunderstanding. I misunderstood a lot of things. You misunderstood a lot of things, which made you do the mayonnaise thing. And I still, I reached out to Brandon privately and I would love to hear back from him and I would love to work it out. This is, you know, that incident where Barry Bonds got in a fight with a dude in his dugout. And after that, they were buddies. Right. Jeff Kent. Yeah. Like who they were. Jeff Kent, dude. Yeah. It's after this whole thing broke out. I've been actually feeling some feelings of warmth toward Brandon. It's not all negativity is gone. It's, I mean, I've been a little sad that some fans have been really pissed off at me, yeah. but I think this Same. coming to the, this boiling over like this has actually made me feel more receptive to him. Man, so you guys are mean, dude. We, we might, we should read some of the comments. These if, guys write, dude, I'm going to read some of your comments, guys. If I saw, I, I would love to hear back from Brandon though. And if I saw him, I would give him a hug, talk it over, go to lunch with him. And I know yeah. I said that last podcast, but it was a little snarky because I was still mad about the incident. I sincerely mean that after this new information has been brought to my attention. Yes. And if I, I want to clear some things up too, after the, the comedy show blowout, I was emotional and, uh, you know, at my house, I said some things I didn't mean. I didn't directly mock, uh, you know, any family members or anything, but I mentioned some drug use stuff that was inappropriate. And, you know, what'd I, you say I, exactly? I said that, uh, I mentioned that he should go do heroin again because you know he had told us that information and uh you know his it's unfortunate because one of his family members had an overdose Mm -hmm. uh, and it was heroin related so Mm -hmm. i could see how he could correlate those two things and and think that i'm mocking his dead Mm -hmm. uh, relative which was really insensitive and yeah you know i have a tendency to have uh you know i get emotional eventually i'm kind of like i let people you know you know get under my skin or let people sometimes you know (sighs) You know, I guess I let people take advantage of me sometimes. And um, I felt like in this scenario, I just exploded because I was so angry at the fact that that happens sometimes. And I just I'm I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. And what I've been told people's relation, like your relationship with Brandon is different than anyone else's because you literally live together under the same roof for like over a month. Right. So it's like some he could say something and he he knows that he was saying things that were really also nasty to me so you could say something that could get under my skin and you know i felt like we got to know each other well you know we spent a lot of nights you know hanging out having a few drinks even a few times so hanging out with underage chicks <laughs> sometimes there are underage chicks yeah. there we're gonna admit that but mm. that's what i got on them but uh <laughs> that's that's not true i'm not <laughs> i'm not, not throwing that <laughs> accusation seriously that is a complete joke you <laughs> fucking asshole. i can't think of a single time we've ever hung out with underage chicks yeah dude never oh, come thank on. you, austin, me you? austin was there oftentimes me and me and the fucking brandon we had a great live stream one time one of the most classic live streams of all time you saw it yeah so we we've had some good times and dude i'm i'm sorry that i i, I said some really fucked up things i'm sorry that you know, I you think I know you have the impression that I was talking a lot of shit at that sushi 
that you know launched it couch was asking me to go to with him because he was going to meet these guys and i went and they had mentioned explain, this scenario. explain to the audience too because you're explaining to brandon yeah, yeah right to now. brandon uh i went to a sushi lunch with steezy kane alejandro phil and this kegel weagle guy and um you know they had been talking about a, a scenario that happened earlier in the day and they were talking a little shit about brandon i i'm immature i like a good shit talking sometimes but I, so i joined in and for that reason that's immature dude you know i shouldn't have done that and i i do believe that at the end of everything though i did tell him that you're funny and you would help them in any video that he that you participate in you're going to help get views i told him that you know you it's a, you had produced a classic in the danny mullen universe so it's not like i was telling i was not blacklisting you or like talking shit to make them not want to work with you like that leo um you can talk about this if you're comfortable or not. Mm -hmm. There's there's a charge that you called up Kegel Weagle and right. you're telling him to specifically not work with Brandon. Yeah, is this is a, this is absolutely so misinterpreted. I can't believe it. But the the actual story is Jacob, who has Kegel Weagle's information, because I do not. Jacob is the one that met him before me. And actually, when I, he invited me to that sushi date, was like, dude, this Kegel guy's classic. You should come see, check him out, dude. He's he's fucking funny. So I was like, all right, well, let's go, dude. So I went there with the pretense of that's the first time I ever met him. Never got his information. Don't have his number. Jacob was FaceTiming him and Kegel was like, Hey man, I would say bring Leo over here or something. Either, either him or one or the other was like, Hey Leo, come and say hi. When I came to say hi, Brandon was there at under the emotional stance that somebody had told him, like I had been talking shit about him, basically trying to get him blacklisted. So he just straight starts attacking me on the FaceTime call. So then I bantered back, you know, he, he talked about like, me being lazy and being a piece of shit. And, you know, I mentioned some things to him and, and it was just like a back and forth, like, you know, just talking shit style. But I felt that was the first time that I actually felt like he was like very hurt by all this. Cause other, otherwise I was always like, dude, like people say things they don't mean. And then it's, you know, we, it's over, dude. We're dudes, dude. You know what I mean? Like how many times have you said something fucked up to one of your boys and then you're cool. So mm -hmm. at this point it seemed like he was turning, you know, a little bit too much or somebody had poisoned his thought process and i think it might have been you know it could have been those guys i don't know like somebody basically had he had gotten the idea by that point that we were trying to blacklist him and that i was helping now that's he had said the blacklist thing before that it was just you and then now he's like all right leo's also helping in the blacklist so then i think he really there was two enemies now there were there was many more than than just that so that's why i don't like that word blacklist because uh -huh. danny ever only talked to me and you yeah that was it yeah. there is one misunderstanding that i think is pretty important we forgot to even mm -hmm. talk mm -hmm. about it's uh in the podcast you say i talked to the police they asked me if i wanted to press charges sure i said no nico says that he wanted to he told the police that he wanted to that's my but legitimate memory from the yeah, but situation we, you didn't state whether or not he did press charges you simply said that he told the police he wanted to yeah so did or did not nico press charges it was my understanding that he did press charges but that the police didn't take his information they took my information down so as far as i know no charges were pressed but it was nico's intention to press charges and i fully agreed with nico pressing charges yeah and there brandon plays a clip of nico saying to the police that he doesn't want to press charges but he, it, it's kind of an unclear sentence and i'm almost certain that i heard in the extended footage him also saying that he did want to press charges but you know nico he told me drunk. he claims there was that, a lot yeah. of adrenaline there was a, it was all a chaotic situation mm -hmm. so i wouldn't be surprised if nico misspoke uh to the police or yeah. whatever like you it, know, it seems he, to me like at first he wanted to and then maybe he changed his mind yeah, or what nico know. told me is that he was just trying to figure out if he needed to do a 10 court in austin so he was trying to figure that out. And he, at first he said no, but he said then he changed his mind. That's what Nico told me. Okay. My understanding, and again, this was a high adrenaline moment. I didn't press charges. They took my information. Nico, after all was said and done, said he did press charges, but they didn't take his information. Mm -hmm. So it seems to me like he tried to, but maybe he accidentally said no, or he was too drunk to remember what he was saying. Right. But it seems to me like charges did not end up getting pressed. Sure. Right. I wouldn't be surprised if the police there are not interested in really pursuing this kind of stuff because it just happens all the time on 6th Street. Somebody shoves, yeah. somebody throws one punch, they take the guy down. Yeah. It's just way too much paperwork to try to get send this guy through the entire system. They got a good system there one, on 6th Street, that's yeah, for sure. I'm sure it yeah. happens all the time. So it was, it was I wouldn't be surprised. It was quick. Yeah, they, and now whistle? after the fact, yeah. with him sober, like I, I don't think Nico really cares. 
Yeah. Like, to that degree. Like, maybe when he was drunk, he was more into the, yeah, fuck him, let's press charges type attitude. Because, I mean, he, I, to, to me, it looked like he was pretty neeked out. He, he might have been. I mean, we were trying to get I him drunk. A couple shots. We wanted to get the uh, Dante Culpepper thing set right. up. Which you did. I thought yeah, he was that gonna, was funny. That was great. <laughs> I thought that guy was going to strip Dante. for him. I thought he that, was going to strip for him. I, I told the guy maybe to take his shirt off. Uh, mm-hmm. That, I will say, is the single greatest casualty of this entire situation is that that is a home run of a video and that video like should be showered with praises from yeah. the fans and the comments are just soured yeah um which yeah. i get it there's a lot of shit going on whatever the like dislike is ruined but that is a you cannot argue that that's not a good video it's even if you are 100 percent team brandon mm-hmm. that video is great well, great variety video i great fucking love that video. bits tied into previous videos oh man it's w- great one of my favorite things is when leo is being buddy buddy with the wheelchair psycho <laughs> and the guy's like or leo is like he's got a lot of demons he was uh, molested one time and the guy's like yeah but he brags about it <laughs> brags leo about goes daddy why are you bragging about me and molested <laughs> listen i've been molested more times than any of you can shake a stick at <laughs> what a fucking classic dude, dude i was i was watching that video on on stream and I saw you do the uh, the the, pedof- the child porn joke uh-huh. and I went oh, I wonder if Danny's going to do the rule of threes oh, and then yeah. you said it a second time and yeah. I was like he's going to do it and yeah. then you said it yeah. a third time and I died. Unreal. 